Good morning! Welcome back to my channel. Right now I am in Gatwick next to the airport, just landed a couple of hours ago, slept here, and now I'm hopping on the train to go to London to visit the Linden Art Fair. I've made a call to a YouTuber to join me in the tour, to show me around and talk about uh, life as an artist in London. Let's get on going. Let's go, let's go. Are you kidding me? <sighs> that must be the bus. Oh, delayed. the Linden Business Design Center where the art fair is taking place finally after turning around and around we're here hey who is that hello hello nice hello. to see you hello my name is Robert Dunt and I'm from arttop10.com which is a website and a YouTube channel and I'm very pleased to be here today with Mo and we are going to wander around London Art Fair have a little look at it pick out a few special pictures yeah, Art Top 10 is my YouTube channel that talks about art, interviews artists. It's not meant to be highly academic or complicated. It's meant to be an open place where everybody can chat and say what they feel about art. Tell me a little bit about the fair. What do they normally do? What well, are their specialties? Well, uh, London Art Fair is, is essentially, uh, I would say it's like one of the mid-range art fairs in London. So you the high, high end with the massive money is like Freeze Art Fair. Then you've got the lower, end, which is stuff like the Affordable Art Fair, where the top price of the Affordable Art Fair would be £6,000 for a piece. It doesn't go above that. Freeze is probably like £50 million. And here you're probably getting into about £20,000, I think, is some of the higher things. I think I really like London Art Fair. It's, it's got a lot of like what I would call modernist works. So it's got a lot of people like Ben Nicholson, um, Barbara Hepworth, Ivan Hitchens, Patrick Heron. All these kind of quite classic British artists from like the sort of 1950s sort of thing. But then interspersed in that is slightly more contemporary art, but it, you're not at the hardcore end of contemporary art. You're at a sort of still much more approachable level. I make large abstract paintings, um, uh, which I, were inspired by music, essentially. Do you know a band called the Jesus and Mary Chain? The name is funny. <laughs> they were in the, the, like the end of that Lost in Translation film, yeah? There's a bit at the end and you can hear the, a song by them there, but they made very pretty kind of pop songs and then covered it with noise, distortion and feedback. And so my paintings are much the same. They're very pretty pictures and then they're covered with like noise, distortion and feedback. So they're a bit like, like the sort of Patrick Heron, like the British modernist artists I like. And then it's covered with this noise and distortion and feedback that gives a kind of chaos feeling to it. So there's one there with a cat. What is your price range of your own work? So, uh, that would sell for about £8,000. Mm. And it's a unique piece? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an original one-off piece. So business good in London? Um, it's all right. I mean, obviously, I, I don't know, we, we've got a cost of living crisis here. Have you got one in Spain as well? Well, a bit, but we have other crises like... Yeah. Unemployment crisis. The, the art world is incredibly competitive at the moment, probably more so than ever, I would have thought. Because there's just so many more artists. You know, if you're selling online, if they look at things like Saatchi Art or Rise Art or any of those online sellers, they've got like almost millions of different artists with stuff there. So to try and dig your way out of that sort of huge, huge section of artists is hard. I have a feeling that back in the Though there weren't quite as many artists back in the day. 
like because of those online platforms, all these artists from developing country can participate in the game as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, well, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good, but it's more competition, right? It's more competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you sell online? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So mainly you sell online or with a gallery? Uh, mainly online. I mean, I've got different galleries I've shown with, but mainly online or mainly almost just directly through myself. How do they find you? Well, the buyers? Yeah. Often just through people I know. So it's often through friends of friends of friends just recommending me like that. That's probably the most effective thing. And then sometimes you just get people out of the blue who've seen something somewhere and they buy it. I don't actually know if the YouTube channel has helped. Or other social sales. media. Social media, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Instagram in particular, I would say, is good for the art. You'd much rather sell it yourself because you're going to have to pay like 50% commission to gallery. the gallery or more these days. More often seems to be like 50% plus VAT and then there's an obscure calculation so you look like you're going to end up paying like something like 65% to the gallery. Have you paid no. ever to show? No, no, never. no. There's no point, I don't think. I mean, I don't think there's any point because a lot of those shows you pay for, it's like, you know, you'd have to go to Venice or something. You'd have to work out how to ship your stuff there. Since Brexit in the UK, shipping stuff is just a nightmare. Uh, it's just so expensive and so complicated. Before Brexit, I remember sending some paintings to Portugal, and I think they were put in a sort of shared van for about, and I paid something like 35 pounds to ship them to Portugal. After Brexit, you're looking at like 500 and 600 pounds to move the same things to Portugal. Because you, you couldn't just stick them in the van, you'd have to get them properly sent, you'd have to get all the paperwork, so it's suddenly shipping stuff to Portugal is now like shipping something to America. If you have to weigh the influence of, let's say, the pandemic versus the Brexit, which one has more impact in your art, in oh, sales? Yeah, yeah, Brexit by far. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The pandemic was, was actually quite a good time for selling art. Because you can just work at home, right? <laughs> we work at home, but I think also a lot of people in the UK, certainly, they were fixing up their houses. They were making the houses look nicer, they were decorating, and part of the decorating was them also buying art. buying art. So I remember, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, we hired a van and drove a massive painting down to the middle of Somerset. And there's not even traffic. Exactly, and there wasn't even much traffic. <laughs> look, this is a painting here, I like this one. This is by an uh, artist called Patrick Heron, one of those ones I was talking about. Yeah, there we go, yeah. Yeah, so he was 1920 to 1999. So the, the, these are like the sort of things that I'm quite inspired by, these simple, colourful, straightforward pictures. But then mine are like warped, twisted versions of them, psychedelic versions of something simple and pretty like that. And did you go to art school? Yeah, yeah, I went to City and Guilds of London Art School. Got a first class honours in the fine art painting. So you think that's important to have a successful career? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think, I think the most successful artists are probably people who are just networking their way into more effective sections of the art world. Let's say this year, in the next following years, what is your hope, wish, goals, objective? I, I would always like to actually be in this, London Art Fair. Um, that would always be one thing, because I think my pictures are quite well balanced in that they're, they're contemporary, but they're not complicated, aggressive. And then they sort of relate to a lot of the modernist kind of vibe that's here. You are happy with where you are? No. <laughs> no, I'd much rather. Um, I'd much rather have more exposure, to be selling more things, to be in better art fairs. But are you willing to do what it takes to get more exposure? The question is more: what What do you do? Yeah, but whatever you do, likely is against your instinct. For example, I have had many artists mm. ask me. Um, I want to start a YouTube channel. I'm like, oh, go ahead, start a YouTube channel, you'll get exposure. And then they're like, yeah. oh no, I don't want to attract a bunch of artists who are viewing my channel. I want yeah. to attract collectors, high-end yeah. collectors who are viewing my channel. I'm like, number one, there are not so many. So you yeah, exactly. need to reach first 10,000 to reach, yeah. you know, the after, right? So yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. you need to go to primary school to go to secondary school. It's, there's a, a stage that you need to build from ground up. Mm. So you have to practice, do good quality content for the first 10,000 that are irrelevant people to be able to reach relevant people is a detour. Oh, they can't, what? They can't be bothered to spend the time and energy on it. Talking about other artists and other people mm. actually gives them pain. 
Oh, what? Some they're worried what they're, they're worried they're showcasing other people. Yeah. Here, it's probably different. I should think a lot of the artists and these things have been recommended by other artists to the gallery. It's very open. Well, I, it's, weirdly enough, I, I think it's very opaque, actually. I, what is opaque here is how you would go from it's like selling your stuff online to you could almost see how you could sell something here but uh, uh, yeah, it's it's you just can't really work out what is going on with the gallerists or the people or how it's chosen they, they're certainly not they certainly don't look for you to come from a rich or fancy background but i think what i've found impossible to tell is i mean this, this is more straightforward, so something like Browse and Derby, yeah? A lot of the pictures in this gallery, yeah, are by dead people. So like you and Uglo, you've got here, um, you know, classic sort of Slade, British artists, beautiful at drawing, came out for sort of Slade, William Coldstream kind of thing where you would draw. And look, you know, you've got really nice paintings. Um, so these people are, so these are quite straightforward. They're all dead, so they're all already in a historical ranking. So they're easy. They've already got their cachet and their sort of thing. What's harder is say like, um, you see maybe something like, I can't try and, I'm just trying to find something that's like a more contemporary piece, but I can't see something. You see even a lot of these things here, these are all still by well-known artists. That's the London Art Fair as much like, so you've got like Ivan Hitchens, that big long one over there another well-known, established artist. Um, these, these things will all have been sold at auctions and stuff like that. So they've got a guaranteed kind of price, which you could find out. So whereas, say, somebody like me, I haven't had anything sold at an auction, so you can't get a, a level on what the price of my work should be. Does that make sense? But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure people, I don't know what you think, I'm not sure people buy art half the time because they like the look of it. I think they buy it because of who the artist is and what they've seen or what they've heard about it or what they're told. Not quite their investment value, but you know, their, their, their place within a sort of art history hierarchy. Or you know, like, like if something's been in the Tate, then everybody will start buying it. Um, or Guggenheim. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. You think it's even more opaque in Europe, the art Oh, world. my goodness. Yeah? Look, to be an artist in Europe is expensive. Yeah. Let's oh, say okay, yeah, yeah. you need to pay the taxes in order to become a, a licensed artist. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. you're not allowed to sell your art. It's illegal. It's illegal? Art. It's not illegal to make art, but it's illegal to make money and sell your art uh, if you don't have the license. And to have the license is quite expensive. You can't be from a poor, broken, working-class family yeah. to be able to afford everything, right? You have to have a license to sell the art. Yes. So, have you been to Paris? Yeah, yeah. Have you been to the Eiffel Tower? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen the people selling uh, some souvenirs um, yeah, yeah, on yeah. the street? Okay. Yeah. When the police come, what, they, what do they do? Run away, I guess. Yes. But do you think they're selling drugs? Oh, they're just selling little Eiffel Towers. They're just selling Eiffel Towers. Why would they run away? What, literally, because they don't have a license to yeah. sell an Eiffel Tower? Exactly. That's extraordinary. Oh, yes. But luckily in France, if you're an artist, you pay one third of the taxes of the one who sells Eiffel Tower. Okay. In Spain, you pay the same as a lawyer. Same as a lawyer? Yeah. Lawyer, photographer, everybody pays the same. It's social security contribution as a freelancer. Okay. It doesn't matter if you make money or not. You pay that 300 pounds every single month. The moment you don't pay it, you're illegal to make money. Yeah, we don't have that. Well, obviously, if you may, if you sell stuff here, you would pay tax on it. Yes. But you don't, you don't have to start paying tax before you sell anything. That's luck. Yeah. I mean, in that way, England's a lot easier, I guess, to do it. Easier but to start. Easier to start. But I still think it's still, still quite opaque. It's just how you become a big artist. I think how you, how you become a big artist is very opaque. But how to bring your art to the market, that's all, all right, right? You can bring it to the market. I mean, how to get it in somewhere like here is more complicated. I was chatting to a guy up here yesterday. He um, runs one of the galleries up here. And they, he's got a gallery and he's been in the affordable art fair loads of times. And this place just won't look at him. They just won't, even though he could, he could pay to come here and do everything, they, they just won't have him. I don't know really, it's, 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 it's a tricky thing.
I wander around here, I can hardly even really see any, I mean, I occasionally down here at one of these galleries, I've seen um, paintings by people I know, but it's not like, I mean, I can't see anything by anybody I know in the art fair. I mean, I know a lot of different artists in London. Um, I can't see anything contemporary by anybody I, who's alive, who's making art. Um, which is quite bizarre. Um, Besides what other people do, that is something out of your control. Like, oh, why don't galleries talk to me? But that's out of your control. But what do you think, what resources is stopping you from becoming, you know, the next big artist in art history? Is that money? Um, I don't know, it's a good question, really. I mean, I almost begin to think if I was going to seriously focus on, I, I just, you'd probably, frankly, just be hanging around networking with people and probably just stop making the art altogether because that's completely pointless to being successful and literally just hang around chatting to people and just spend ages just building those networks. I do, I do remember when I was at Sydney Girls London Art School, there was somebody who did reasonably well and literally he was never in the art school because he was just always out schmoozing people. You see, I think it's quite interesting because if you look at a lot of these modernist things here, like the Ivan Hitchens, um, that, but that, because that is from more from that time, so when was that done, 1965? That's got a lot more um, uh, craft in it than you'll find in contemporary art. There's a lot more understanding of the paint and the paint handling than you'll find in a, in a, in a more modern, I mean, what's this one? I can't see. But I mean, here, I mean. The minute four. It sounds like a good song. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I just don't know. I mean, something like that, you've got, and that must be reasonably contemporary as well. I mean, I'd have thought people would buy that because, you know, they want, if you buy it, you get paint. When something's more objects, yeah. more three-dimensional, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, it's it feels like a sculpture. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. usually that's another way to, let's say, quote unquote, add value to your painting. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, if yeah. you do all the yeah. tactics yeah. of adding value, yeah. you have more chances of selling more your chances. art no, at actually, certain times. That's actually a really good point, actually, because I've often noticed people are much happier to buy little sculptures than they are to buy pictures. Because I guess they, they feel like a thing. Look, here you go, here's more, more sculptural painting. And if you put a little bit of gold on it? <laughs> exactly, it'd be even better. It's even better. Uh, and if you put one out of one, not, no duplication, no yeah. addition, yeah. it's even better. Yeah. And if you give a good story yeah. of how you made it, yeah. that you went to Himalaya and back, yeah. carrying the paints, yeah. flying to the Mars and back, yeah. it's even better. Yeah, it'd be so it's just ticking all those boxes. So what would, so what would you say? What would you say? Well, what, what 10 things should I do to be more successful? Mmm, good question. <laughs> well, what are you willing to do? Well, I mean, other than murder people, I'm, you know, I'm reasonably willing to do that. Okay, so then I would say that, number one, the easiest thing for you to become immediately, not doubling your price, but at least doubling your exposure, yeah, yeah. is to become an activist. Oh, an activist? Uh, artivist, activist, artist, artivist. So, become an activist with a message. Oh, I see, have a message with the paintings. A quite radical one. A oh, radical one. Well, if you say, oh, woman has equal right than men, sorry, that's like what, we discovered that 100 years ago. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. wouldn't be a message, right? Yeah. It's like, today's a good day, it's not a message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so let's say animal rights. Yeah, yeah. Like, for example, you have a dog, right? You love your dog? Yeah, yeah. What, what is her name? He's called Jeffrey. Jeffrey? Yeah. If you want Jeffrey to have equal rights. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Jeffrey to have equal rights. That's what he probably deserves them, actually. Okay, so that's a message. Yeah. And if you make a series of painting dedicated to Jeffrey having equal rights, huh. you'd get double the attention immediately. Yeah, yeah. But do you think you would? Do you think you'd actually get the attention? You'll get attention of other Jeffrey owners. Of other Jeffrey owners, is that? Yeah, so you'd get an attention. It's a different kind of attention, not an art collector attention, yeah. but general public attention. General public attention. Because you know what? I, I find most of the stuff you do just has absolutely no effect at all on anybody. It's such a sort of, 
Maybe people are just a bit bored with art these days. I don't know. Yeah, because there's no message. Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. Oh, hello, Jeffrey. He's a little pug. Oh, little pug. He's so cute. Yeah. He's, um, I mean, he's got a pretty strong personality, so. You see? Oh, look. Give Jeffrey. him proper human rights. Oh, Jeffrey rights. Yeah, <laughs> Jeffrey rights. So, go on. What, the second thing I should do? Write a book about a series of your work. Let's say Jeffrey have human rights. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is a series, okay? Yeah, yeah. Write a book. Write a book about it. About it. Okay. That consolidates your idea. Well, no, 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 absolutely, absolutely. I mean, as you've been wandering around here, I'm sure you've noticed that the galleries have got monograms of the artists lying on the ground to, to, to show their art historical relevance. Oh, like, like around here, look, you've got a book here. So you've got the book to place them in there their worldly position. The activist message, the book, what next? Well, depending on what you like doing, like social media, for example, you're already doing well, yeah. you know, just tell more about your own story on your channel. Because our yeah. top 10, I mean, the channel itself is about yeah. other it's art. It's about other art. So. Right? So if you actually talk a little more about yourself yeah, or have a secondary channel just about I'm making Jeffrey art. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, that is probably a good point, actually. I probably should do more about what I'm doing. Um, gone number four? I would say, have yeah. you lived most of your life in the UK? Yeah, yeah. Live somewhere else. I'd love to do that. Uh, yeah, mean, but Half a year residency somewhere, yeah. just to get some fresh air. Because I'd love to. You know, it's, staying it's, in one place is uh, yeah, killing no, no, the creativity, no, 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 no. right? I'd love, to, I'd, love to go, I'd love to go to South Korea. Really. But um, uh, I've... I've I'm the one who looks after our son, 14-year-old boy, so I've got to take him to school every day and get him from school and all the rest of it, so that is too complicated. In three years, he's going to college. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, okay. How old is Jeffrey? Jeffrey, Jeffrey is two. Okay, so you still have at least, uh, what, 15 good years with Jeffrey? 15 good years of Jeffrey's. So... <laughs> I mean, you're going to leave my wife behind. <laughs> take Jeffrey and yeah. travel the world and make art and... Yeah. I mean, to be a bit adventurous and to renew yourself. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm not. You good. have fresh ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then you come up with the rest of the five to ten <laughs> things to do. <laughs> <laughs> Last question to you. Oh, yeah, go on, go on. What is your advice to young artists today who are just out of school? Yeah, yeah. well, I, actually, I had quite a weird thing because I actually did an English literature degree. Then so that's why I, you should write a book. Yeah, exactly. Then I trained as a lawyer. Um, then I worked as a journalist. <laughs> um, as the politics and religion reporter at the Surrey Advertiser. So I did a journalism course as well. And then after that, um, I then went to art school. Oh, cool. And did, and so I've got two degrees, a fine art painting degree and an English literature degree. Wow, I see. Yeah. So if um, you had to give an advice to younger you, yeah, yeah. someone who just out of school, who either studied art or not. Yeah. And don't, don't, don't do about 15 different things. <laughs> just stick to one of them. <laughs> Otherwise, you just waste so much time. But I mean, it is just brutal, the art world. Absolutely, utterly, utterly brutal. And unless you're utterly committed to it, I just wouldn't get involved with it at all. Unless you're, unless you're literally happy just painting, you know, a couple of times a week and having another job. I wouldn't become obsessed that you're going to suddenly be selling pictures here for £20,000. Um, it's, it's, I mean, what, what, would you give similar advice to people in Europe? I mean, that's pretty mean advice, but I think you've got to you absolutely love it. It's got to drive you obsessively with how much you enjoy it. And if you, I mean, that's the main thing I would say, just make sure you're absolutely obsessed with it before sticking on it as a career. And then I think I probably would say, just network with people. Get out and go to as many exhibitions as you can. As I've chatted to other gallerists who said, they, they, there's people who they think of as being on the scene. So people who, you know, who will turn up to all the exhibitions or turn up to all the art, not the art fairs, the smaller exhibitions by the galleries, basically. And they'll turn up to them. Um, and they'll get to know who they are. But then you see, I, I, I remember coming, coming here two, three years ago, and there was a woman, and she was in a gallery upstairs, and the gallery was just her work, and she had 
put her work into the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition. And somebody had spotted it there and told this other person about it, and that's how they were here. But whether or not, but I haven't seen them here again since, so you don't know. I think, it, I think, it's, I think it's even if you get into these things, it's quite hard to maintain the things selling. And unless they sell, the gallery's not going to bring you back. So it's almost, you almost in a way need to have built up your own sales funnel. Funnel, yeah. You almost need your own group of people who will buy it. And then I suppose the gallery's not going to worry about taking you on because at least they know. I don't think the galleries really have any interest in building, building up your ability to sell. They, 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 they want to have to do as little work as possible. They just want to turn up with something they know will work. They don't want to sit around persuading clients why they should buy something. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I mean, why would it? If, if you were spending your, if you were spending forty thousand or whatever it is as a gallery on this space here, you don't want to be turning up with something that's a gamble if you can sell it. Do you? So fair enough in a way. Just be sure you actually love what you're doing, and um, yeah, make sure you spend as much time networking and chatting to people as making the work, if not more. <laughs> <laughs> encounters this encounter section is definitely the highlight of the fair because uh, the galleries here are very um, young emerging uh, vivid uh, with a lot of energy and the fresh ideas i can see that they are like african art um, co-ops, uh, not-for-profit, associations, and they're much more experimental and more open to young artists, so you might want to check it out. This is perhaps my favorite uh, pieces. It's approximately 2,000 pounds per piece. It's getting late to see that there's no sun anymore and I came here like super sunny. I've spent already four or five hours at the London Art Fair and I had a great time with Rob. I had a great chat and uh, showing you a lot of art. Uh, so let's call it a day today and see you in the next video.